Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today we're going to complete the mini fireplace set that was begun in last week's video. Several additional pieces have been added, like these andirons, this fireplace screen, and a gothic stand to hold all of the tools. We've also added a little broom because, well, you just have to have one, and the finishes on the existing tools have been updated. If you didn't catch part one of this two-part series, there's a link in the description. All of these pieces have been cut on the Cricut Maker using Astrobrite's Eclipse Black 65-pound cardstock. I love this stuff. You get the cleanest cuts ever. Okay, so here are the new pieces that have been added to the bundle. A top shelf and a base, a back panel and support for the stand. Then we have the andirons, which consist of a standing front piece, two overlay pieces to hide all the construction, and the irons themselves, which extend toward the back of the fireplace and support the logs. Next is the fire screen, and it consists of these panels. And finally, the little broom, which consists of overlays over the internal construction layers. These little frames didn't make it into the final cut, so you can ignore those. If you've been following my Cricut Maker miniature videos for some time, then you're very familiar with this next process. What I'm doing is using Zig two-way glue to laminate eight layers of cardstock, one on top of the other. And this fine tipped pair of tweezers is my very best friend because it helps me to align all of the little details so that by the time we get to the end of the process and we have all eight layers, we still have a beautifully crisp silhouette. The final two layers are overlays that will conceal the central construction slot and give it a finished appearance from the front while leaving that handy little slot in the rear so that we can build three-dimensional pieces from these. Repeat this process so that you have two of these and iron pieces, each consisting of eight layers and two overlays. And now it's time to laminate the portion of the and iron that extends toward the rear of the fireplace. Again, eight layers of cardstock, one atop the other, everything aligned to the best of your ability. And at this point, we begin the hardening process and that's done with a water thin super glue. Once the pieces are hardened, the construction can begin. The tabs on one end of the andiron fit neatly into the slots on the back of the front of the andiron. A drop of super glue holds everything firmly in place. Next, it's time to begin constructing the stand for all of the little fireplace tools. I'm beginning by laminating together the eight layers of cardstock that make up the base of this stand. Using the tips of the tweezers to maintain alignment for all of the construction slots is crucial to getting a good result. Once the laminating is complete, it's time to harden the base using super glue and an old gift card. Just apply the super glue to the surface and smooth it in using the gift card. I work on a Teflon sheet to make it possible to easily peel the piece off of the surface once the hardening is complete. When the base has been completed, it's time to begin working on the upper shelf. And again, keeping the slots carefully aligned is crucial to the success of the final piece. I'm using Zig two-way adhesive to laminate all eight layers of cardstock together. I like to use a brayer at the end of the process to make sure everything is glued very thoroughly. And then applying super glue hardening to both sides and the edges of each piece. 
Hardening the pieces with super glue is really effective at creating strong pieces and it also leaves a rough surface. So I found that this little nail drill is incredibly handy for helping to smooth out all of the edges. In conjunction with a sanding sponge, it's really helpful. And I found these ceramic tips that I just love. They are super hard and they create an ultra smooth finish. I especially like them for cleaning up the interior edges of these rounded apertures. Okay, now it's time to put together the back of the tool stand. And this time, rather than using Zig two-way glue, I'm reaching for some gem tack because it's so liquid and is easy to paint on with a brush. Because we have both a large area and intricate cutouts here, for me, it was the best solution for creating the laminated layers. Once the laminating is complete, I jump right into the hardening process. I don't even allow the internal layers to fully cure. This has never caused a problem, and I love the way that it speeds up the entire build process. And again, I'm smoothing the surface with a variety of tools. An old sanding sponge, emery boards, needle files, and this nail drill with a ceramic bit. I use a metal file in order to smooth out the surface of the construction tab. This just makes it easier for everything to fit into place. An initial dry fit demonstrates that everything is on track. Now I'll concentrate on creating the final piece that makes up the rest of this little tool stand. I just love the gothic details on this support. And again, we're looking at eight layers of cardstock cut on the Cricut Maker, laminated together with your favorite adhesive. And finally, hardened with super glue and smoothed with a variety of sanding tools. Several of the bits that come with this nail drill are small and fine enough to fit into the tiniest of the internal shapes here. A metal file is used to smooth out the surface of the construction tabs. And now we're ready to do a dry fit. The support fits into the upper shelf and then into the standing back piece. Once all of those tabs have been fitted, the base can be slipped onto the bottom. Even without adhesive, this piece feels very sturdy. But to make sure that it'll hold up for years of handling, we're gluing everything in place with super glue. And then to cover our crimes, we're going to put a final overlay over the back that covers all of the construction tabs and slots. Once this is glued in place and firmly pressed down, Another layer of super glue is applied to the exterior and smoothed in using an old gift card. Then the piece is sanded to a lovely smooth finish. Next, I'm going to construct the fire screen. And for this, I'm laminating together four layers of cardstock. So for each of the side panels, I'm creating two pieces, each consisting of four layers. So at the end of the process, we'll have four of these side panel pieces and two pieces that make up the central panel. The reason for this is so that we can install a hinge mechanism so that the piece, if you want it to, can actually fold 
at the edges of the panels. The side panel pieces are complete and now I'm putting together the central panel. And again, this is four layers of cardstock layered one on top of the other so that we have two identical pieces at the end of the process. For the simplest of hinging solutions, I'm using this linen hinging tape. It's adhesive and has a protective layer of paper on the back side. I trim two tiny little strips of the tape and then lining up the bottom of these panels, I'm adhering one strip on either side. I use a one, two, three block to help me align the bottom edge of all of these panels. And then once the linen hinging tape has been pressed firmly into place, I apply adhesive over the top. And now we can glue the additional panel on top of that, sandwiching the linen tape between the two layers. For the best results here, you'll want to allow the adhesive to fully cure before you actually try to manipulate the piece. I was too impatient and I started playing with it and folding it before the adhesive had set up and so I stretched it out some. This can be avoided by being a little more patient than I was. To cover up all that glaring white from the tape, I'm simply using a Sharpie. And now I'm coming in and applying the super glue hardening process to each of the panels. Trying to be careful not to glue everything together at the hinge marks. And at this stage, I can begin smoothing out all of the contours using the nail drill. A couple of my viewers and Thicket Works studio members mentioned that we didn't have a broom included in the previous version of this set, and they were so right. So we're taking care of that right now. There's a slight difference to the construction of this piece. We're using a full eight layers of cardstock for the inner layers and then two layers of cardstock for the overlays that will hide the construction prongs. So you'll end up with three separate pieces. The thickest will be the inner layer that has the two little funny prongs and then two additional pieces consisting of two layers of cardstock each. I recommend hardening these at this stage. Now, my solution for the bristles for the little broom was to use a single layer of craft foam. I mark out the width of the piece and cut it to size so that it will fit between the two prongs. And then I add a whole series of tiny little vertical cuts on either side of the piece of foam. Once I'm satisfied that these cuts have created fine enough bristles, yeah, that'll do. I then cut the piece to the correct length and glue it between the two prongs. Once that is complete, we can now place the overlay panels on either side and that will cover up all of the messy construction in the center leaving a nice finished little broom. And there is the second overlay.
great. I just think that's so cute. Now I'm going to harden the exterior of the entire piece in preparation for shaping the handle and smoothing out all of the edges. The sanding drum attachment for the nail drill does a great job of helping me to create the kinds of soft curves that I find so appealing. It's completely optional, but if you'd like to, you can add another piece of craft foam onto the bottom of the base. This will give the piece a little more visual weight and of course cushion it wherever you choose to place it. The whole time I was designing and building these fireplace tools, I envisioned some kind of gold accents and I decided to work with Dr. P.H. Martin's calligraphy gold ink. I love this stuff. It has such a mellow color to it and it's so easy to work with. It dries incredibly quickly and it bonds just fine to the surface even after it's been hardened with super glue. I'm just using a little flat bristled brush to add accents at all of the areas on the handles that have detail and along the front of the little shovel. I'm also adding gold to both sides of the broom and the andirons and of course the fire screen. Now this is a pretty look but it wouldn't be complete for me if it weren't distressed. So I just grab an old emery board and file away at the surface until it has the amount of aging that pleases my eye. This is probably the most satisfying part of the entire process for me. It seems to somehow bring the pieces to life in a way that I really can't articulate, but that matters to me. Yep, gold is pretty, but distressed gold is gorgeous. And it doesn't take much. The entire distressing process probably took me less than three minutes. If you like, once you've completed distressing all of the gold, you can apply a spray sealer just to protect that beautiful finish that you've created. And so another layer of history is added to the abandoned boudoir diorama project. Every week, my appreciation for the Cricut Maker and the creative possibilities that it opens up for us increases. I'm astonished at the level of detail that we can capture using this incredible machine. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today.